Hello. We are live. Oh, go that way. How you doing? Oh, it's crooked. So this is a, you're hearing patches from Mega Magic Violin Demo. Oh, there's my announcement that I'm live. Good. <laughs> yeah. Great. Hi, Andre. Welcome, everybody. My name is John Skippy Limkul. Glad to see you here. We are going to have some programming fun today. Let me do this. I got a little house cleaning work I got to do real quick. So let me put the correct text into here. This is for the $2 Mega Magic Violin Demo Library. So, look at everybody that just showed up. Hey! So this is a demo I wrote using eight of the patches from this library. This is, let's see, I can show it to you this way, artwork wise. Oh, actually it's better over here on the main page and hit this. So this is the Mega Magic Violin demo. What that means is this is 18 samples pulled from the full library that work well in program patch single sample across the keyboard mode <laughs> if um if i want to show you i could go here and um if we were to go to the user directories uh, i have all of the samples for the violin library loaded and we are building the multis as we speak and if i was to go through and just show you what a single sample uh let's see i gotta be here Let's see, let's make sure I'm on. This is what a single sample sounds like. This is why it's really challenging. Most of them. A single sample by itself is really hard to sell. There's a certain range that works. For the library, for the demo library, I included mainly samples that have the reverb added to them. So that you have really fun places you can take this. It's not just a dry sample. And so I'll cover, we'll cover all 18. Now, yesterday, I made a very productive and I think very helpful a beginning programmer uh, tutorial video. And we'll, we're gonna do kind of the same thing repeated today in a live stream, but I made these two patches. Oh, wait. Are they no longer there? What's going on? That's right, I renamed these so that they would show up at the end of the list. It'll take it a minute to do that. So I hope everybody is doing well. The uh, website, PluginGuru.com has this available for your dining pleasures. This is the Mega Magic Demo Library. Um, 18 samples, it's $2. This way you're just in the, the system. You're part of this whole system to work with um, so that you can, what, what happens if you make patches and they're great patches and we wanna use them in the library, you get the full $50 library for free. Uh, so I want you to be in the system so that I can just add it to your profile really easily. It's it's not easy to do that if you're not. So there's details here on the rules, which we'll cover. Um, 
but it's really fun. So, and then the demo song is there, and I don't have a video up here. I got to link that video. Oh, good Lord. I'm showing all my private information. I should not be doing that. Uh, thanks. I'm glad they do that. Jeez. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, where are we at? Let's go to here. Yes, so I put those at the end of the list. So we have this that was made yesterday. And this is a four patch, uh, four layer patch. And just so you know, this is something I hope we avoid doing a lot of. It's fun to use four layers, but watch the CPU. It's killing my computer. And so that's with an arpeggiated patch with four different layers. I don't think I'm going very crazy on effects. Um, and it's still a lot of CPU hits going on. So if possible, aim at two layers for your patches and then add from there if you need something special. Um, it's don't just go four layers because that makes it sound bigger. Don't, don't take that approach because, uh, it, it, computers aren't more powerful and Omnisphere takes up twice the power it did a month ago. So be aware of that reality with four layers. You have the ability to, to double what a patch will require to, to sound. So it's best to aim for two layers, um, and then go from there. We also did this yesterday. So the sounds don't all have to be... This was actually made from this in yesterday's video. Okay? So we'll cover a lot of the similar things. Let's do the rules real quick. So this is a library where there's a, a library you can buy for $2 with the 18 samples. It comes with these 18 patches, including there's 16 violin, and then there's two that we made last week in last week's live stream. Remember when we were using crickets and sound effects for our uh, sound design safari? Well, they're here. I put them in here. There's that, and... And the way this works, just so we're clear, these um, these patches are in an initialized state. There is no modulation sources. They're ready for you to program as, as you see fit. I did set up the envelope. So certain things play with a long release or a short release. Uh, the pizzicato. Right? So I did set up the amp envelope, but that's the only thing I really set up. Uh, sometimes there's hidden filter settings that if you turn it on, you'll get, you'll get a filter setting, but I, I set it to a default state so that um, whatever you do to it is what you do to it. There's nothing that I've set up, no mod wheel assignments to do anything. So it's up to you guys to take these from here to wherever you want them to go, okay? Um, now, so you have these 18 sound sources and we're going to make patches in a little bit here but the idea is this you make patches send the patches to me by september 26th which is in 11 days from today so you got 11 days i wanted to have two weeks but it took us a little bit longer to get everything ready and finalized so cut into our programming time just a little bit i'm sorry um but uh some work to do i see cpu and what is hard hard yeah, it would be nice if Spectrosonics could multi-thread on us here. Uh, yes. <laughs> Danger of four layers is melting the CPU. Yes. Just be aware, four layers is great. It's nice. It's there. I think they did it more for what they need to do for the hardware synthesizers. They're trying to emulate the parameters and stuff. They needed more than two layers because a lot of synthesizers have three oscillators. Some have four oscillators. And so they did it 
And so since they did it there, then that means it's built into Omnisphere now. But that doesn't mean to just use it because it will melt your computer if you do that, especially if you start using granular and you use all the possible effects. One thing you can do if you do use four layers that will save CPU is to go to the signal path and set it to shared. This forces it to only have one set. See when I hit A, B, C, or D? It's just one set of a rack. You get one rack, all four layers now go through this. So the idea of a bell sound having reverb and the pad having chorus is gone. As far as this, when you set it to shared, you're gonna have a reverb, you're gonna have a chorus, it's gonna be put on everything. But because you've done this, you've simplified the signal path and you've cut down 16 effect slots to four. So that will force you to not get so carried away if you do get into using more layers. You can try shared versus normal, okay, for the effects. Um, the sounds, they th these are select sounds. Let's do this. I'll do the same things I did yesterday. So I started this whole project. Let's see, I got to pop up the little purple thing here. And oh, let's do this. So I need to get the MIDI key. Well, I don't have, let's start if I say show MIDI keyboard. Here's our show MIDI keyboard, which is awesome. Love this little utility. Um, so now when I move my mod wheels and stuff, I will hear that. I want to do this though. Um, but you won't see that when I'm down here showing this. So this is the third solo string library. We've done this rodeo two other times, if you recall. We first did it with Mega Magic Cello. Cello, I can show you, has, this is the first of these libraries, and so it was done in some ways a little bit differently than what we did with the newer libraries. Uh, here we just have the dry, and sometimes I would have like the... The samples without loops. But I didn't do that with the other libraries. Uh, when you get to, I don't think, with, did I do it with viola? I can't even remember. If we go to viola, I think we get to the VL1. If you say dry, it's just loop. So I, we ended up putting our, in, our efforts into other things. For the vibrato library, uh, for the viola, there's dry, there's the ambience. And then Mega Magic, which is just this nice ambience. Well, for violin, we took it a step further. Uh, when I did Mega Magic Guitar, I did a um, Mega Magic 2, which was the pitch shifting. So here's vibrato. This is the full map, 15 samples for the violin. Beautiful up high. If you compare that to, I think this is the viola. It's a very, let's see, let's go to dry viola so you can just kind of hear. Let's see if we go here, dry. Right, and here's where the viol is really sweet. That uh... kind of falls apart up there, whereas the violin is just loud and proud. Oh wait, uh... right now, unfortunately for Omnisphere, I have to cut the sample map in half. I can't use all uh, 15 samples that are in the map. So it's not, 
quite as sweet, but it's still very sweet. Um, but what we have to show is that there's um, the dry version. And this is with no effects or anything at this point. These are totally dry. The ambience. Right? And then we did the Mega Magic 1. And it has this pad. It just goes to heaven, you know? Right? Well, these sounds sounded really great with the, sh the Valhalla pitch shimmer, the Valhalla shimmer effect. So I did those too. So you have this cool growing reverb that's then looped very nicely um, to work with. So there's dry, ambient, Mega Magic 1, Mega Magic 2. So it has more maps than either viola or cello. And uh, so when we're looking at the demo patches, let's do this, let's initialize this multi. And let's go Mega Magic Viola. Oh wait, we're gonna go to the patches, to the violin demo. So these have, as you see in the names, I name all the samples and all the uh, patches with either a dry, if it's dry, here's pizzicato dry. Oh wait. I'm not playing the right Omnisphere. <laughs> that happens sometimes, right? There, we'll put show MIDI on this layer. So, uh, go Shane Doom, show MIDI. And let's stretch it out and say five octaves and put it right here. And so we have dry. And I picked this one because as you go down an octave lower, you guys can program some pretty cool basses using this as a layer element. But this is one sample. There's over 725 samples in the full library and I picked out the cherry picking best samples that play across the keyboard. So there's dry, ambient would be like the spiccatos. And there's a down and an up. And you can do some fun things. Let's get into programming a little bit. Let's see. Let's unmodulate this. If It shouldn't be modulating. Uh, so we want to modulate this with... Um, we want to go here to alternate. And let's set it to a full intensity. And then let's copy this layer, right? We're going to copy this layer. Go to B paste this layer so it's also set to as you can see a spiccato up let's change it to be the spiccato down sample and of course to do that it's their directory systems are kind of weird so let's go paste that layer one more time you can't arrow up and down it's looking in another directory it's looking here because these are now hidden so we have to go here and unhide here here and now we can go spiccato down so A is spiccato up, B is spiccato down. They're both set to modulate, let's say show modulation on layer B and then invert it. So this way when I play one note, that's one of these two samples. So it's now alternating as you can see, now it's quiet and it's playing. So now I can... It doesn't seem to work polyphonically. It confuses it when I play polyphonically. One note is cool. So the other way to do this, if you want to do it polyphonically, is to use velocity. 
and have velocity positive and have uh, the other layer show this and have it be velocity in the pot that's in the positive oh wait see here so we want to go uh down so it goes up oh maybe i had that wrong okay that's what it was maybe so let's go back to let's try this i'll figure this out alternate and alternate and one has to have volume up inverted and one has to have volume down no it still happens with when you play more than two notes you See how you see just one or the other? When I play together two notes, it's playing both. Okay, well, you can't use that method as I was thinking. Um, you would use velocity. Let's go to the here and set it to velocity. And then you could use like the arpeggiator. And let's just say we have it do four steps, starting super soft and then too high. And turn this on so. And if you set it to chord, and let's say eighth notes, um, let's see, that should be working, right? I see it. Oh, I probably have to go to the ARP and set the velocity, this velocity, 100% to the ARP. So that way there's nothing except these velocities happening. Okay, so now we need to figure this out. So, and then go to the B layer. Now it's polyphonic. You can see it's it's loud, so we'll turn it down a little bit. But uh, so you have the two different bow samples to work with. Boy, that was a long time to show you. <laughs> um, and then um, so if we start this start start, here's crescendo. This is where they start really soft. The original, the final map is just gorgeous of this. And the reverb lets it ring out. So that you can do all sorts of fun things. If you bring this down and just modulate this with an LFO, right click or control click on anything to assign it. And then say legato sync to eighth notes and change through the waveforms to find the little pulse at the beginning. And this is why the reverbs are really nice. You can do really nice little rhythmic things like that. And if we were to like... Like just modulate right here just a little bit. something different like that right then go to layer b sample let's go to the demo and even just like say mega magic vibrato well maybe not the vibrato but let's say the motion slow and then we need to set up the envelope because it's like that so let's have a little bit slow attack long release And then maybe turn on the harmonia and set this to be an octave down so that we get it to be thicker, richer. And you start to have something really interesting. So let me save this. As I go along, I'm making patches too, like everybody else. So this will be a BPM string. 
cascade I call it cascade falling because I have one more thing I want to do to this. I'm going to turn on a filter, have it be like a band, a high pass would be really cool. High resonance. I love to do these types of sounds. So we're going to do an envelope that's going to be a slow decay down. No velocity, I want it to be the full range. And I need to do an offset, so let's go offset. And because of the resonance, we gotta turn this down a little bit. And unfortunately, because of the offset, it doesn't go down to the bottom like I want. So here's the other trick to do that. So set this back to normal, and instead you double modulate with this going to here to the filter envelope again on the cutoff. So that way I can get down to the bottom range. Let's find the right shape for the envelope. So let's zoom out on the envelope shape. I'm gonna be a little more like that. That's more like what I want. And then this is, I, I'm, we might be able to get away with this. Let's try this. To save CPU, we're gonna put it to shared. Did this to me yesterday. I was like. If you put it to shared, it should be that everybody goes through the shared single path, but it makes layer B disappear. Have you guys noticed that? I. If I say shared, I, I maybe there's a setting in here. Interesting. Well, let's keep it on normal just to keep moving. So I'm going to go to layer B and just add a chorus delay. More feedback, less depth. And then layer B, I want to do a different delay since... Something like that. Maybe a reverb here. We could have an LFO modulating the depth of the reverb, which would be fun. So it kind of swims in and out. Yeah. Cool. So that's a cool layer combo I don't know if I want to add much more to this because you're gonna have you know when you're making these think of music and how are you gonna use this in music I'm gonna actually have this fade in with the even though it's synced it can be a slow fade on the amp
and we could go program crazy and add more stuff to it, but let's just save it right there. Now, because I'd already saved this once, remember this, this is kind of nice. Um, when you go save patch as, you have to go through the process of choosing the appropriate folder. So we would go demo, this is actually, we'll do this like, we're, we're legit, legitimately doing this. It's an ARP BPM, so you wanna save it into the ARP BPM folder. And we have the name for it. And now we can, well, we gotta change mood. You have to do tagging, right? Energetic, euphoric, hopeful, intense, joyful, majestic, uh, peaceful. But the type, the type was strings. So if you hit the little more button, it will pop up all the tags. So I'm gonna turn off these, these categories that might not be appropriate. It's not really hollow and pure anymore. It's not an organic, it's kind of a hybrid strings, yeah. But at the beginning here now, you see we have all these art BPM things. So this is a, this is using, uh, let's see, BPM combo, pads. There's definitely some pulsing going on some strings in there could be a texture maybe not so you go through you set up your tags now the reason that are uh, this is really important check this out the reason the bpm stuff show up is because i'm saving it into the arp bpm folder this is why you want to use the structure with the folders that come with omnisphere because each one of those folders triggers a completely different set of tags right so let's say we save this where it is. If I was to, let's do this just to show you as an example. If I was to say, save this patch as, and let's say it was a vocal. So I go down here to human. And if I hit save to save it into the human folder, look at boys choir, classical choir, all sorts of different choir things show up because I chose the human folder. If I say cancel, it goes away, I don't have to save it. But So save patch as whatever folder you choose, if I put this into keyboards and save there, it now will pop up keyboard tags, okay? So the tagging system in Omnisphere is smart. It's dependent on folders. So you wanna save, if you can, to the folder that matches the sound you're making. If it's Art BPM, it all goes into the Art BPM folder, but otherwise, and it's tricky. There's some of the folders that their names really don't make much sense. And um, it's not the names at all I would have used for some of these for Ethnic World or Kalimboscope. I've never saved anything to a Kalimboscope folder or Retro Land or, you know, uh, there should be Synth Slow, Synth Fast, Synth Bass, Synth Lead. Instead, there's Synth Mono and Synth Bass. It's, it's laid out differently than but this is the way it's laid out. It's been this way since the beginning. So you use one of the folders. If you want, let me show you this. Um, let's have you come over here. If you go to your Steam folder, you can save patches into the existing Mega Magic Violin demo folder. And then just send that whole folder to me when you're done making your patches. Or you can do this. If you open up your Steam folder, and if you go to your settings library, to patches, at the very top, there's a zip file in this folder called current categories. This is the hierarchy of these folders. Like if we go to these, close this. It has all of these folders all stored in a zip file. So if you're gonna make a library for Omnisphere, the first thing you do is you double click to unzip a copy of that and then you can rename this whatever you want you could say uh, let's see Bernie uh, violin B -I -O -L -N, patches right now if you do that it's not going to show up until you save a patch in it and Omnisphere won't recognize it so the <laughs> The trick that I do is I'll just take an existing like violin patch, right? And I would say, let's say Cascade Falling, copy. And then go up here to Art BPM and, oh, there's a patch in there. 
Hmm. Paste. Did they mess up their current categories? Well, wow, let me see something here. We open this up. Are there other? No, there's just that one. Interesting. Okay, then you would quit and restart your DAW, and then the Bernie Violin Patches folder will show up inside of Omnisphere. Like right now, if I go over here and I refresh, refresh this directory, it will not show up. Oh no, Bernie, don't start the Apple thing. There are many of us that have made their entire career using Apple, so don't go there. Um, is that file and tag structure documented somewhere? Um, it might be documented some uh, online through the manual that's online. Um, yeah, Th they both have their strengths. They're both tools. God bless you for using whatever you want. And shame on you if you say bad things about the other, as far as I'm concerned. That's not nice. Um, so by doing that, if I go here and look, see, it didn't show up, right? But if let me save my song, I'm going to quit and come back. So hang on one second. And we're kind of back. It'll all be back in one second. And I don't mean, Bernie, I don't mean shame on you. I'm sorry. I don't don't mean that. But, you know, whatever works, God bless you. It's I don't like putting anything down that's not. So if we go to user directories, there it is. Bernie's patches is there. So, okay. That is how you get your own library started. If you ever want to make a library, that is the process. Take the current categories folder, unzip it, put a patch into the folder, into one of the folders. It doesn't even have to be tagged properly. Quit your DAW, start it back up, and it will show up. Um, that's how it works, okay? Be happy with what you got. Right on, Brother Herbie. Bernie, bro, brother, brother Herbie. <laughs> brother Bernie. All right, so that is how you get your own library started from scratch if you ever were wanted to do the insanity of trying to make a patch library. Um, but as I said, it's just as fine. And I can tell the 18 patches that came with it. If you just save your patches, if you're new at this, if, if you get to where you're ready to send the patches, you can go through and delete the factory ones if you want. You don't have to. Um, or you can just send a folder where you just take the patches and put them into one folder. I can organize. I we're we're very slick at figuring all that kind of stuff out. I've gotten patches in every format possible from doing this in the past. Like I said, this isn't the first rodeo. So the idea is just to have fun making patches. Some tips to help you along the way. Let's get back to the violin demo. And uh, as you see. I have two of the same patch with the same name. I'm not sure we'll let you do that. And the reason it's doing that is because if I go to my Steam folder, I have that patch in two different folders, right? So if we go to settings, to patches, to not to Bernie's folder anymore. In fact, sorry, Bernie. Bye. Boom. Uh, if we go to Mega Magic Violin Demo, as you can see, it's in the Art BPM, and I think I had it in the string let's see where is it at yeah string uh cascade falling now check this out it's kind of cool because i have already created this directory and i have put these sounds in here i can now update this folder and it will update correctly and revise itself and one of these will go away if the directory exists, then the update will update that directory. It has to know that directory is there before it can update it. 
So as you'll see in a second, it's going to go away and only show one BPM cascade falling because I got rid of the second one. But you can have duplicates with the same name in Omnisphere because they're in different folders. So just be aware you're able to do that. Um, try not to do that because it gets confusing if you have things with the same names, right? Mm -hmm. And because I have so many stinking libraries loaded right now, it takes it a while to um, update. So I'll just chew in my licorice and enjoy my Arnold Palmer. Mm. Ah, life is good. All right, see? Updated. There it is. Just one. Right? And as I said, I will revise this more when I play it with speakers and over time. Now, if I was to do any edits to this, I want to point this out. Live with your patches. Don't just make... I've had in the past people make patches and send them to me right when they make them. Don't do that. Live with it. Live with your patch. Get a drum groove going. I'll tell you the best thing on the planet to do if you're trying to really make um, cutting edge patches that are going to work and impress people and be usable. Get a groove going. Go over here to Super Macho Drums. Let's get the EDM kit up. Go to the groove player. Go Super Macho Drums. Go to t Pop Rock or something and hit play. Uh, chicks in space. Okay. Just have anything. You could go to the techno trance. Just have a group like this. And then play your sounds. See how they work. I'm on the drums still, so let's go back here to... Does it sound like you could hear this on a record? Heck yeah. So that's the acid test. And, I, and when I'm doing my libraries, I typically do this to everything. I make demo songs. I live with the patches. Especially if I'm making bass sounds or something like that. Let's make a bass sound because I'll show you how this works. It's really important to know that you're comparing and working on something that's eventually going to be used in music. So it's not so much that it has to be cool by itself, that it's like you play this and it goes boom. It's like, get yourself a drum groove going. Super Macho Drums has the built-in groove player, so it's ideal for just saying, Tom is happy or, you know. And then if I wanted to have fun, I could go over here, go global. Change the shape. Turn on sync. Get a little something subtle going on there. Right? And now, with that in mind, make a bass sound. Okay? So here, we'll stop the groove player for a minute. And let's uh, go to... I was talking about the pizzicato dry. Uh-huh. Why are you doing this to me? Oh. Okay, so we gotta go to violin demo. And I'll make a bass totally different than what you guys will make. I'm gonna make something really weird. Let's have the whole thing go down an octave. I'm going to do kind of a squelchy bass. I'm going to modulate the unison with a really fast LFO. Wow, 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 wow,
Let's go to the shape. Okay, so I'm ready at this point. To see how my tonality works with the groove, so. It's horrible. It's late. There's too much release. If I was going to be targeting this groove, that's the important thing to point out. If you're targeting a groove for ambient, chill, meditative, spa music, then your rules for what can be okay and allowed. But if I'm doing something for a 100 and let's say 110 beat per minute, 115 beat per minute groove, a couple things. Number one, mono. So it'll cancel. Maybe I want some glides. I'm going to turn on glide. I'm going to turn on the little this this allows any edits that I do now will affect all the layers that have that turned on. So let's go to the release. And instead of just right here, I want to go to the shape. Cuz I want to see the shape right here. So we're going to zoom out to the shape. Okay, turn this off. It's not there yet, so let's uh, see here. So it's, I want to add some velocity. So let's add velocity to actually. We might gonna add a little distortion to this too to get. I'm gonna get kind of carried away. I want the velocity to affect the decay. So I want to say new velocity to envelope filter decay. So now it's long. Maybe I want to go the other way when I play harder. And I also want to have velocity go to the attack. So I can control that as well. So velocity envelope filter attack. This will speed it up when I play harder velocities. So it can be kind of sloppy when I'm slow, but as I play harder. You can get it to where you have a little bit more of a sloppy Joe when you're soft, but when you play harder, it's it's a, it's it's different. And the release is still. Now, at this point in my bass, I want this to stick out more. So I'm going to assign, it's my favorite trick on the planet, and that's the mod envelope four. Go over here, choose just one spike, set the polyphonic note. Oh, 
I did it to layer B, I believe, right? Silly me. Unmodulate, go to layer A. Modulate with envelope four. There. Yeah, that's what I want. It's too much, but you get the idea. So we go over here to mod envelope floor. Now it's like, boom, I got gotcha. you. And I don't want it to show up all the time. So I'm gonna go to the velocity of the amp and crank that up. And I wanna do it to the filter too, so that it has um, maximum filter. Let's hear that with our drum groove now. Now it has personality. It's really important. Give your sounds personality. And the pitchy G. Here's without it. You don't even hear it. Even if it's just a little bit. Without it, it's still gone. And then you can get into fun tricks, like have this up fairly high. This envelope, the four mod envelopes, one thing that's fun to remember is that there's an intensity or depth slider right here. So you can go to four. As you bring down the depth, it's the same thing as limiting the range so it's not so wide. And then right click and you can actually modulate these with all sorts of things. Now I'm going to go waveform searching because I've just been using the default waveform. I don't want to use a default waveform. I'm going to go down here to the maybe sub os. And now we gall up the drum. Now I use the default saw because it has a lot of energy content so I could get the shape the way I want. Because once I start going into subs, it's a lot harder to hear that. So I'm programming using something that's going to tell me how my filter shape is, how my f all those envelope settings are. Because now I can go searching through darker sounds and the shape is surgically placed. I have it doing more than just blah, you know. Then move the shape. This is how you cycle through the wave tables. You have all these, when you get to the really cool edgy ones. Like maybe you want to do something, since this can be modulated, let's modulate this with velocity in the opposite direction. Maybe I want to go in the other direction. So go like this. Okay, so now I have something that's gonna blend better, I think. With... So it's got too, it's too loose on the release because I want to do busy, kind of crazy stuff. So let's sync this up. This is where zooming is tricky with this because you, if you zoom in much, now you have to scroll forever. But I really want to try to get... better okay but using a drum groove you're gonna tell a whole bunch of stuff about how something plays you know if I'm trying to do let's do this let's save as bass um, pitsy knocker 
and I'm going to choose the folder before I save it. I named it, but this will go into Synthbase. So that way, when I choose Synthbase, I get tags. So I could use these tags if I wanted to. It's not acoustic strings anymore. It's not hollow. Well, it's kind of hollow and pure. It's kind of okay. Um, but you at the top you have your bass category thing. So we can say this is it's a bit of a bit of a gliding. It's percussive. Uh, bass, bass synth. That's usually close enough. Mood, uh, energetic, fun, funky, intense. It's kind of powerful. It's aggressive. Upbeat. Okay. Then here you put in your comments, tell it stuff, and then hit save. And now it's saved into the bass folder with tags that match. Now, I haven't done any effects yet. Sync might be fun to add velocity to. Not too much, I want to keep that bottom. Now for effects, I'm going to go to the Guru Racks right here, down to the mixes. Uh, something like... Just the compressor and the EQ. And then if I wanted, what might be fun, since this kind of has a dirty, it could be dirtier since it's kind of pure. So go to distortion, flame. And then let's add velocity to this. And now it's starting to rip my head off. I love it. So let's go modulate with the wheel and let's put just like some BPM delays. Uh, and let's set this be quarter note. Maybe just quarter notes for both sides. And so it's not just sitting here. Let's modulate the LFO. Maybe a little bit less of that, but just to have a little harmonic to the delay. So so now when you play it in your groove, Okay, so now since I've already saved this, I can just say save patch quick and update it. So you can keep working with your patches, refining when you've got it a little bit closer to how you want it. Each time you sit down with fresh ears, you're going to go, oh, what if I do this? What if I do that? I could do this. Oh, I, what if I try this? You know, so it's fun to do that kind of stuff. So uh, I got my keyboard doesn't have channels or modes. All right, hey, any questions? If you have questions about certain parameters that are not clear to you in Omnisphere, ask. Um, if you have questions about the way that, oh, we should cover this rules thing really quick. So the way this works, let's see here. So, so you're invited to buy this library for $2 and make patches. Here's the rules. So from now until September 26th, the library is going to disappear from being for sale about the end of the month when Mega Magic Violin. By the way, I have the full artwork. Check this out, guys. 
show you this is really cool desktop we just got it done last night in this cool this is the final artwork for mega magic violin i wanted it to say this is the best library because of the three i think this is the best this the samples are we did the best job with them uh, with the mega magic and one and two versions and stuff it's great so that's the final artwork um which is really cool um see here so so please uh, submit no more than 20 patches one to 20 but not 80 okay I, i'm not going to go through 80 patches like i've done in the past you need to weed out to your 20 favorite patches before you send them to me okay you have until september 26th it's all right if i get a whole bunch of email from people on the 26th it's better than getting an email every day okay you can make up to however many you want, but here, here's how it works. Typically, if you make 100 patches, if, if you're, I, I aim for about 80% being like five stars or four stars. Um, as you're just starting out, that percentage will be lower. So the more you make, the better you're going to get, the more that are going to creep to the top as being your best patches. And it really will help you get into programming and understanding your instruments to program. So that's, that's what this whole opportunity is about, right? Um, all the 20, whatever patches you send to me, I'm going to take everybody's and put them together to make one bank called the Super Patch Bank. Um, it will be an Omnisphere version 2.5 format, so you will need to own the updated version of Omnisphere to play them. Because by, by that point, everybody's going to start probably using more than two layers, more than four LFOs, maybe. Um, but it will be saved out as... This was saved out downstairs on my other computer as a 2.4 library. So it will work with 2.2 to 2.5 for you to buy this $2 bank of patches, right? But the full version of the library and the full version of this super patch bank with everybody's patches will require 2.5. So you have to have 2.5, okay? Uh, by making the patches, you agree that we can edit them to finalize them. I tried very hard to keep the master of the spirit of what somebody creates. Uh, sometimes I might take something in a different direction, but if I do, I will contact you to make sure it's okay. Okay? Um, but you give us permission to do that, to include it, to give it to everybody that buys this bank. Um, the, the, the reward of buying this $2 bank is you end up with a bank of like 200 patches. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool what we do. Um, so, like I said, the library will work with 2.1 to 2.5, but if final version is going to require 2.5, each layer must contain one Mega Magic Violin sound source, and it has to be an important part of the sound. I mean, if I take this bass and I lose the pizzicato string, you really tell that this was. That's pizzicato. <laughs> so we took it somewhere, but it's still an important part of the sound, right? So it has to kind of fit that area. Also, um, even if you own them, please do not include any Keyscape or any Trillion sample sound sources. When you go down here to search through the sound sources, let's say I want to add a sample to this. Make sure you go over here and say core library, okay? That way, this is all the core Omnisphere library. That way, you don't accidentally choose something from Trillion or from Keyscape. Um, I've had cases where I have to reassign things that people accidentally assign something from their Keyscape library or something. Um, we want this to work with everybody that just owns Omnisphere 2.5. So... You have to make sure that you don't use Trillion and Keyscape sound sources. They're excellent sound sources. It's great to have those in Omnisphere, but for these libraries, for everybody to enjoy and use, um, they can't use additional sound sources because that you have to buy those before they're compatible with Omnisphere 2.5, right? So that's the basic rules. And just get, get your patches to me by the 26th. Uh, there's a readme.pdf that comes with, if we go over here, uh, let's see, I put it right here. Right here is what you get when you download this library. 
There's the artwork for the demo library, which is different than the artwork for the final library. We refined it and made it more impressive. There's the README, which has all the information about this and the rules and how everything works, as well as, you know, how to contact me if you have questions or where to submit the patches. It also has pictures of Drew and Mary who played the violin, and that's the violin that we sampled. So, um, yeah, so that's what comes with the $2 library. Um, let me see, do you guys have any questions? You should write plugin agreements if you want to highlight. Can you give us a quick hint on EQ and compression settings that you would use on string sounds? Okay, sure. Um, let's see here. Let's go to just, uh, let's use the ensemble power. Let's make it a little bit more of a pad. Now, as far as compression goes, even just the default vintage compressor does a nice lift. And if it's too much, you can bring down the threshold. And that will open it up more. Now, as to my, for EQs for strings, I usually go between the 12 band or the vintage 3 band. Because the 3 band has this mid frequency where you can take and then, uh, uh, I don't know if you know this trick, but if there's a certain sound that's bugging you in a sound, crank the gain, sweep EQ till you find it, and that way you know where it is to remove it. So I could bring down the presence a little bit. If you were looking at an, uh, well, it's actually, it's fairly easy to just bring this up. Then as I bring this down, it's affecting more sounds because it's now it's down to 4K and up is been being EQ'd. As I go up, it gets sweeter because I'm not hitting the meat of the string sound. I'm hitting more of the ro rosin. Right? So maybe 10 or 8K. When you get to like 5K, it gets really nasally. And it really takes just a little bit to just sweeten it shape-wise. If you have this just a little bit and you go between the 8K and... Hear how 8K sounds a little nicer? So play chords, let it sustain out while you're editing the EQ settings. So you can tell when it's too much or versus just is enough so that you can. Uh... And when you're dealing with just one sample, don't overdo the high end because that one sample is being stretched all over the place. So it gets really bright up here. And another thing that can help in a case like this, since this is a single sample by itself, is to marry it. With another sound source from Omnisphere. Omnisphere has some nice strings in it. So you can look for things like if you go sample, go here and type in strings. And then go over here to core library. So you're only looking at these from the Omnisphere library. Um, there's a couple nice strings down the list even. Uh, the, there's Chamberlain. There's some modular old, old synth strings. Um, there's Elka's in here. So you could...
something like that's kind of fun to add um, because because of the rule of us only having one sample across the keyboard if you marry this something like this elka which obviously has like not every note sampled but a lot of like every other note it's really lovely when you layer that with something that's like even if you turn this down it will just add kind of a verification that it's legit you know <laughs> and there's some other strings that are really nice if we went to Here's a, a cool shortcut. So say we go to A and we go to, we want kind of the, the, the real strings. So if we say atmospheric strings, and these have a slow attack, so you can move the attack in a little bit. If you go to the folder, Hit sound match. And this will pop up all the other strings, including power strings. Did you know those were inside of Omnis here? They're... So if, now it's really loud, but. here real quick and uh that's makes this one sample sound a lot nicer and i would probably take this and envelope and then velocity and So let's go look now at our, here's without. That's with. <laughs> okay. How many parts can be added to each octave on an, uh, well, I've heard that's, um, you can add up to four layers, but each layer, uh, until you get to multi-mode and turn on stack mode, they're across the entire keyboard. And once you turn on stack mode, then each of the eight parts could be mapped across the keyboard to be a different patch doing something different, okay? Okay, so. There's that. Where would we try to get our sounds level-wise to be consistent across the question? Good question. Great question. Okay, so in your DAW, you have meters that are showing you your signal. And my rule is to always look at the signal that you're playing. If it's a bass, here, let me do this. Let's copy this. If I call this bass, I reset my, so it's too loud. So I could look at going to the effects of this, bringing down my gain here. One reason I love the three band EQ is because there's a volume, which I use for mastering all the time. So I could bring, that's perfect. You want it to be under zero dB. You don't want to go above. You can, it won't distort because it is 32 bit inside of Omnisphere. But I find that if you target everything to be about the same, 
then when you are calling them up and going through them with the song playing, the level is, uh, where'd you get Show MIDI? Yeah, Show MIDI is a free utility. I'll put um, the link in um, the in this uh, Shane. Uh, actually, maybe I can find it this way. Shane. Yeah, right here. I'll post the link. Um, uh, uh, show MIDI. Yeah, he said I could share it. So here it is. It's for free. I'll put it in the chat. And it's a MIDI effect. I think you can show that uh, in Ableton does those as well. I think there's more things than just Logic Pro that does the MIDI effects. So, okay, now when you go to Polyphonic, let's go here and hit paste. So it'll paste back my strings, hopefully, yes. Typically, because it's Polyphonic, I now will do a test with like six notes. And I don't want to overdrive. When we would do the Korg workstations, we would sit and slam with sustain pedal down six notes and make sure that it was at about the same level consistently. Now, one thing you'll notice, I'm a little bit more aggressive with EQ. A lot of the sounds in Omnisphere are in a very natural state. So you Watch this. If we just add, say, the seven band, out all this rosin that's nicely tucked into the samples. And you can do some fun things where you bring this down and you use velocity to modulate the EQ, believe it or not. If you do this a lot, modulate these two bands. You just have to be careful because this is a global EQ. So if you play hard notes and play soft notes and they're ringing out, you'll sometimes hear the stepping of the EQ, but it's not that bad if you just do it in small amounts. If I was more dr dramatic here, and then now you really notice it. Hear that? So you probably wouldn't want to do that. But if you have it just doing a little bit of coloring, then you don't notice it as being such a big. And we'll save this patch as, uh, we'll call it the Skippy Ensemble. And we'll just leave these settings as they are. I'll clean them up later. Now, you can also do really fun things with shift and crush to the samples. Um, not so much to the samples that come with the library, but to Omnisphere samples. Um, crush works even on third-party library samples. So I, I could go to crush. Just assigning random to this is a patch all by itself. Right? But shift does not work with any third party samples. Does nothing, nada. But on the uh, strings, let's see if we were to call up, uh, go back to the Skippy Ensemble. Where is the Skippy Ensemble? With strings, it's great. And what it's doing is it's shifting the map while transposing. So as you go this way, it gets brighter in tonality. 
This way it gets darker. So if you want to make like really weird, cool synthy pads. Right? That's coming from the same string source. That's just by changing shift. So make sure you explore shift. Then you have FM, which is a wonderful place to... FM works really well in fractionals. So let's see if we say sine wave. Seven fifty point five. Then, if you go around this and just bring it up a little, you get this really nice swirly. Change waveforms. This seems to be not working yet. <laughs> Um, tell us about proper leveling of patches. Yes, yeah, so the main thing is just to make sure that you don't go over zero dB on your on your output when I'm If you have room to grow more and you want to expand it, you know if you have a compressor, you can bring up the levels here. just don't want to send a patch in that's like this. So many times the mastering part that I do, the okay to edit part that I put in there, is taking something like this and just simply getting it to be like this. Okay? Okay? So FM. Here's without it. Here's with it. And the depth, it's modulatable, so you could set this to be an LFO that was going really fast if you wanted to have a cool little. And as you change the different waveforms, that changes things. You can use these parameters to also modify. A really fun trick to do to LFOs is to modulate this with an envelope. So let's say mod envelope one. And let's go to mod envelope one and make it be the default ADSR. Zoom it out, hit lock, and make this nice and long and more linear so it's always changing consistently about the same. Now this is too long. Let's make it shorter and no loop. Right, so rate has to be slower, and this has to be a starting place really high. Now, this is one of those things to check out. So I'm playing chords, right? Anytime I play over, Notice how it starts over that uh, back to the fast speed. Watch this. Copy envelope. Go to mod envelope four and paste this envelope. And let's turn off the looping, set it to note retrigger. But 
we turn on the polyphonic LFO. This is what a polyphonic LFO will give you that uh, the other three envelopes won't give you. So it's playing. Each time I play two new notes, even if I play new notes, well, actually I'd have to go like this and set this to note. Now you really know. So we're still set right here to mod envelope one. I'm going to change to four in a minute, but I want to show you. So I'm playing a chord. Each time I play new notes, it restarts that speeding up. And it's doing it to everybody. These guys down below, it's slowing down for them. No, it's not. Now it's gone. If we were to change this to be mod envelope four, and we have a polyphonic, now this setting and all those effects are independent per note. So No, it's not. It's doing the same thing. I thought it was independent. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the joy of like some hardware synthesizers have it so that the LFOs can be independent per note. This can't do it per note. So disregard that. I was building up to show you something that I can't do. It's still cool to use an envelope to slow stuff down like that, right? Yeah, I, I tend to not program aftertouch into my patches because there's different people that play really hard. There's people that play really soft. Um, different keyboards respond different ways and unless you're targeting one keyboard like when we're working on a Korg synthesizer and I know this is the keyboard you're gonna play then I can program it and it's like okay I, I'm I don't like people that it's really easy to make things sound bad with aftertouch if you don't know what you're doing so I just use the mod wheels my my programming source and just make it as playable on the keyboard without aftertouch which t takes away a, a, a zone that you could use All right, uh, any other questions? LFO8 can do poly. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. So then let's do this. Let's say that instead of LFO1, let's do this. So let's unmodulate this and go to LFO8, polyphonic. Thank you, Clark. You win the prize. So let's say let's do this to envelope four. And now, let's see here. So. Let's get this to work right. Envelope four. We have. I hear four to LFO eight. Um, that means I need to go to my FM and show modulation for this and change it to also be LFO eight. There. Now you hear it. Oh, yay, Clark. <laughs> All right, so LFO8 is the one that has the little polyphonic. I'm so happy I forgot that. Okay, yay. So now, now it works. So I can play here. They start slowing down. These start slowing down. They're all independent. I'm not going to use that trick. Somebody can use that trick in your programming if you want. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I'd i forgotten about that. Uh, LFO 8, it used to be 4, but now it's 8, is the polyphonic LFO. Thank goodness there's one. Yay. Oh, you're welcome. Glad you guys like the programming side of this. I want to just give you guys food for thought on There's so many places to take things. Omnisphere is so rich with tools to play with that is, you know, it's just disgusting. So 
But we're about to come to a close. Um, Bernie asked a few times about leveling patches. Yeah, um, all I said, the only thing about leveling patches is to just check your levels. <laughs> and if they're not right, you can use effects and so forth to bring them up. Was there something else? Bernie, I was looking for Bernie's questions. Uh, Bernie, Bernie, where's your questions? Is there, a, I think I answered the question. Yes, you want to target zero dB or below. D ideally not to go above it, if, if possible. <laughs> you guys are great. I'll tell you, the challenge was this. Doing these guys with all of this stuff going on. Uh, let's see. Are the samples? Yeah, no, I don't have the samples. But the Groove RMXs were so much work to get leveled. <laughs> um, even cello was a challenge for a lot of this stuff to get. And then, then the viola stuff came out so nice. I look forward to making more of these, the whispers. These were so beautiful. Yeah. Uh... with the viola library. And I did those to a number of different things. The dream work came out nice. Uh, let's see here. And again, see? Oh, it went over. If it's a little over, it's okay. As it builds up, it's going to build up. For the most part, you're below zero dB. So it's just try not to go. If it's like plus six dB, that needs to be fixed a little bit, you know? Another thing you can do, um, the, the patches in, in Omnis here actually quite a few are too hot. <laughs> so let's do this. Check this out. If you initialize the patch, and let's just quickly go through like maybe I would think uh, patches... The uh, Spotlight EDM, a lot of these are really hot. Like this gets way too hot. So you can look here at the effects. Even just setting a limiter puts a cap on it so it won't go over dB. So compressors and limiters have this thing built in. If you go to tube limiter, it has the same thing, this limit. The tube limiter, when you call it up, it turns it on. Um, a lot of times the limiter will work. But if you listen really carefully. Now this is one where the limiter would work just fine to set this to zero dB and it'd still be a nice full sound but now it's at zero dB. See how it's at zero dB all the time? If without it, Way, way, way too loud. So what I do in my work, if it's going to be like this, is I will go Utility Imager, and I will modulate this with the mod wheel in the opposite direction, and I will bring it down. So I would, if I was doing this, I would set this softer, and then have the mod wheel take it down. So that way, it's... I would first find where 0 dB is. That's good. And then by modulating with the mod wheel in the opposite direction as I bring the mod wheel up, see? And I 
I'm lessening the depth. It's actually better you hear more of the synthesis waveforms and stuff. So by putting an imager, having the volume come down as you bring the mod wheel up, that way you can offset that building energy of filters opening and um, other things that you're doing in synthesis that add level. You can offset it by just sticking the utility imager in and modulating that with the mod wheel. That's what I do all the time. Because without it, this time when it gets to the max, you kind of lose some of the... Um, almost too harsh um so it would have benefited from just bringing the utility modulate this with the wheel in the negative direction and then just control the depth and just keep moving the wheel there. and we got to find your first starting point And the reason to do that is that when you have the sound playing and you if you don't have this, the, the original. You're just it takes over the groove with the mod wheel. It's harder to use than taking the time to sculpt it a little bit more. But the factory voicing, they didn't do that. So it is how it is. And you can modify it with that if you need it in your mix to be more consistent. As you're, It's, it's like the uh, waves effects, the groove writer effects, the vocal writing effects. They're doing a similar thing, but we're doing it now manually with the mod wheel as we change the sound by using the utility. Okay? All right, any other questions? As we are wrapping up this fun programming safari, <laughs> we went all over the place. We went from... What keyboard are you using? I'm using just a simple battery-powered, lightweight... Whoops. Cord... <laughs> That's my light. I have a battery powered light. Hold on a second here. Come here. Uh, oh, it's too far down. Oh wait, we won't get our light back. So now I'm all dark and depressing. Uh, I'm just using a simple cord cross. It's a keyboard that's got a, a mod wheel that when I set it here, it stays. I love the Kronos and I love the other cord synthesizers with the joystick. And for years as a salesperson, I argued how a joystick is the best and the thing that you should use and be happy with and all that kind of stuff. Um, but to be honest, it's nice to have a mod wheel that when you move it somewhere. Now, if you have something that is spring loaded, you can buy something like these guys are great. The beat steps and other things that are control surfaces, the little nano controls that Korg makes. Just assign one of the knobs to mod um, MIDI controller number one. And that way, it would be a knob that you move it somewhere and it stays. Because it's nice to, with certain sounds, you want it to stay at one place when you're, when you're writing and working with stuff like that. I know, the window I... But the problem is it was the chat window for YouTube. So let's see here. I'll just... But if, if I do this, it gives me light. But now you're seeing <laughs> a default. <laughs> so it's all good. It's all good. All right. Well, this has been fun. Thank you for joining. Um, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Is it possible to trigger a layer by releasing the keys? It is not possible. 
Um, they don't have a note release in the traditional sense. You can do things. Uh, one last trick before I go. I love tricks. You know me. So you can do tricks where you have a filter. Let's. We need to use like a 24 dB filter. Uh, something stronger than the 12 dB default. And you want to go to the filter. And, right? So we could have this so that... Let's add one more to get it really... At the start. Now, the trick to, to doing a release filter would be to use the release envelope of the filter to open it back up which you will not hear unless your amp has a longer sustain. And let me see here, what am I? Let's see here, so we're like that, or like that. That should be popping back up. Uh -huh. Oh, this isn't long enough. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I just have a really long, so. So you can do stuff like this. And then the release is dependent on. Like I played notes, I'm holding them, there's no sound, when I let my note fingers up. And then if you don't want to hear the beginning, you could just soften the attack so you don't hear the attack. And you could make this a negative exponential so you could bring it in closer. So you can do that. So you can do sort of a release, but it's not the same as like releasing and having it start the beginning of a sample or something like that. It would be at that place in the sample, you take all your hands off the keys, the filter opens up and now you hear it. Um, so you can do stuff like that, but that's about the only thing for release. It's not a true release like you would have on some workstations and so forth and other samplers. Um, you, yeah, when you're using Mod Envelope 4 to do this, like if we were to take the filter, right now it's, well, no, the, fil uh, the, the filter EG is polyphonic too, so. Mod Envelope 4 is polyphonic by choice. Amp and filter are both polyphonic all the time. They're not monophonic. So mod envelope one, two, and three are monophonic. So like, for example, if we were to take this shape, uh, since we're, let's get in deep here, right? So if we go copy this envelope, go here and paste this envelope, and let's say note and turn off sync. So instead of um, the filters by default, Right? So if we were to instead have the filter, how do we do this if we we're going to use the mod envelope to do this? It's easier with amp to show this. Um, if we had this up, let's see. And then down, and then right click to modulate this with the mod envelope. So now it's monophonic. Meaning that if I play these notes, right, and I play new notes, it restarts it. Whenever I play new notes, it reclamps that one filter on everybody. But if I was to say uh, mute and use the filter by itself, and, oh, I lost my shape. So if we go back here and we say paste this envelope back in. No 
Nobody's canceling anybody. They're all just ringing out in their own, wherever they are when you took your hands off the keys. Because amp and filter are polyphonic. Mod Envelope 4 can be polyphonic, so it works like the amp and the filter. Because these are per note. But Mod Envelopes 1, 2, and 3 are only re-triggering based on just doing one thing and everybody's going to follow along. Um, there's other cool examples you can do with this. If you were to, uh, let's say, let's see, I have some kind of crazy stuff in here. Let's say, um, I wish I had randomizing. That'd be cool to have randomizing parameters in here. You can kind of do randomizing. I don't know if you guys have played with chaos much, but if you... Um, randomizing it used to be you could keep it on remember it used to be you could leave it on and it would like the shapes would dance but you can't do that anymore I guess it's just to it's now more it should be called random it used to be that that was a real-time thing but huh <laughs> okay I'll get out of the teep deep technical woods. Um, hopefully yesterday's video and today's will give you guys lots of food for thought for um, making patches. This is all about, here's 18 new sound sources that including the, and I want to show you one more cool trick. This is from the last week's live stream. This is the Solitarium. Just epic. And as I said in yesterday's live stream, I showed this at the end. This is just a wonderful sound. To just program it and get it to be a little tiny ticky thing, just a little sustain. And if you want to refine the shape, just go in here and zoom up so you can see the shape. And you can hear the difference of the curvatures. And if you want really snappy, add one more segment. Okay. Uh, we should do a deep space episode. Ah, oh, very deep. Okay. We should do a very special, a very deep special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I It kind of has a D50-esque vibe to it for the... And if you listen, there's crickets and birds and... Hear the birds? You know, it's very fun. But again, the filtering. And one last trick. If you do something snappy like this, assign a filter to the velocity cutoff. So you can retain that snappy shape. And now you can open up that filter Otherwise, you can't do this. You'd have, there's no other way really to do that. And there's no control here to assign. So you have to right click and say modulate with velocity. And by doing that, even just a little bit, this way I have that snappy shape, but it's not dynamic. It, it, it is to itself.
And I could try opening my sustain. And the nice thing, that keeps more of the snap. But there's times where you'll want to have where it just brings up the whole brightness. It overpowers and becomes bigger than it was to start. So that's how I accomplished getting that effect. I should go through my live streams and just write down every tip and I'd probably have a book worth <laughs> to do. Ah. Yeah, Omnisphere is a serious synthesizer. And I don't know, this. here's one last tip for you guys. Uh, just for the fun of fun, to enjoy Omnisphere and all it has to offer, if you haven't done this, go to just calling up um, a default bank and go to the top of the list. They've added new patches to the Omnisphere. Normally it started with the wind underneath my wings or whatever it is down, uh, where is it? Um, Flying Wings of Love, right? That used to be the first patch in Omnisphere. These are all new patches. They are very inspiring. Eric did some great work. These are... Crazy, crazy stuff. And there's like 20 or 30 new patches before you get to the Flying Wings of Love, so... Uh, SK1 Auto plays fun. This took a long time to figure out. The trick to this one is that this patch, SK-1 Drums, is actually a patch that has velocity changing between four samples. So the art pattern is... the right velocities to play the groove. Very clever. So there's all sorts of tricks in here. Some great, you know, some of the new hardware synth patches. Good stuff. So if you haven't, it's, it's a nice refresh tour of new inspiring patches to go through the first 25 or 30 patches in 2.5. They've uh, done that stuff. Uh, so <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, so complete 12 is just two better than complete 10. Each one, I tell you, if you look at what they add to each updated version of complete, it's, it's worth it alone. <laughs> For each one. So if you're going from 8 to 12, you're getting like $3,000 worth of software for the update price, which is ridiculous. So it's really great. All right. Shout out. Shout out. Where are you at? When's the book coming out? <laughs> uh, um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for your support, for buying libraries. It's very appreciated. I'm happy to share knowledge, and hopefully you guys appreciate and pay the teacher by buying libraries. That's all I ask. Um, forget complete. Buy contact and some of the really new reactor ensembles. My take is buy it all. Have a big hard drive sitting there. There is so much incredible source and plugins and effects. Um, especially 12 is going to give you a free copy of Massive X when it comes out next year, and you will definitely want it. I haven't played with it. i am only heard a few whispers in my ear from people that have worked with it or know a little bit about it. And they're like, they are not screwing around. It will be a very cool synthesizer. It's the first synthesizer Native Instruments has released like as a separate standalone plug-in synthesizer in a very long time. So you know they are putting a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into, especially 
if they're showing it and they're showing people using it now and it's not coming out for six months or if four months or something like that, I mean, it will be worth the price of the update to complete 12 by itself, in my opinion. Um, so, hey, Spain, Germany, Munich. I'm in Portland, Oregon. It's nice sunny day. Shout out. PDX from the Netherlands. Yes, the uh, new version of Massive will be a completely separate synthesizer. It's not an update of Massive. It's built on the Massive principles. It's modular. It has all sorts of stuff going on that I I, I don't know the details. I don't want to say anything and get in trouble, but uh, it's it's not massive, so it will be new. It will be its own standalone. You'll have massive, and then you'll have massive X. So, um, North Carolina. Oh, Bill, dude, hope you're doing good, man. They got hit with a hurricane. I'm so glad it downgraded, but it was definitely going to be wet. <laughs> um, yeah. So, thank you all. I'm going to go been a good time good to see you guys it's like 12 o'clock works so nicely because it's evening time to you guys where you're at whereas here it's it's the afternoon so people on the east coast and west coast can all see it you know um just so you know i think this is the last week of doing a live stream where i'm using the live stream software uh, i'm not renewing the license for it next week it comes up for renew and it's twenty three hundred dollars um, so I'm not paying that. So I'm looking for my solutions to do live streams. So I have some other things going on. Um, there's a like the people that do the the telestream company has a software package I'm looking at, which I'm gonna be trying to use. Um, all right, thank you, and be safe wherever you are. Be happy, enjoy your sounds, have fun programming. Uh, we will convene next week. I can show you more of the full library. And if you have questions, um, feel free to ask me questions next week or send me a contact if you want. 4.02 a.m. in the morning here. Oh, my gosh. Coxa, you're amazing. <laughs> Saturday night, late night. That's really crazy. Well, I'm glad you joined me. So thank you all. Um, yes. <laughs> Oh, not just 720. <laughs> we'll see if I can do real HD. We'll try. We'll, we'll figure that out. All right. All right, guys. Be well. See you later.